Maybe. Mm. Ricky Atten's attitude probably was what, what lost me in the fight. You know, I'm a fighter in out of the ring and uh, heart of my sleeve straight in there and, you know, straight onto one. Nothing I can, nothing I can do. I think uh, if it had gone a few rounds, it could have been different, but he caught me with practically the first punch he threw, to be honest. Yeah. Would you take your hat off to him as a great champion? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like, I, you know, I'd rather have been... It has hurting at the minute, but I'd rather have been knocked out, you know, with, in two rounds than have somebody that has outclassed me for a full duration. Yeah. Because, you know, if somebody outclasses your boxes, if it stands you on your head and outboxes you, then you can hold your hands up and say, listen, <laughs> the better man won. The better man did win, but, I mean, when the punch lands like that so early on and that, you know, a lot of ifs and buts, but, I mean, I, I, may, may, maybe it could have been different, you know, but, I mean, that's boxing, one punch, that's all it's in set. Great support out here again, as I mean, and, and I know you've seen a few of them afterwards. Has that picked you up, the reaction from them? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, I'm not going to say that I'm the greatest British world champion that we've ever had, but I think one thing that isn't up for discussion is there's never ever been a world champion from Great Britain that has had a fan base like Ricky Hatton, whatever he decides to do in my future boxing. You know what I mean? Credit crunch, you know what I mean? 30,000 people, I think, that have come here this weekend. It's, it's been, I mean, I think the most any other fighter has had is about 10,000 yeah. for any other fight. 30,000 for this, 35,000 for the May other fight. Yeah. It, nobody has ever had support like that. It's incredible. You're still cheering your name now. You know, still cheering my name. And, you know, it's, I mean, at the minute, I find it hard to make a decision about my future because my me, me head's on my backside, as we, as they say, you know, and... I really don't know at the at the minute because I never put I never thought that was was ever going to happen. But um, people are still going to see plenty of me. I've done enough in my career to know. I'm, obviously, I'm going into promoting now. I've got the future of youngsters, and they're going to be filling my dreams. You know, from 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 here on in. But uh, you know, I've, I've worked with so many promoters, I, I, and going in promoting, I believe that I can do a great great job at it. I, I believe you know. I've been a great world champion, I've been the best in the world. I think I can be the best promoter in the world and I think that's the next avenue I want to go. But as far as physically actually boxing myself, I don't know what I'm going to do at the minute. Uh, you know. Shane Mosley said, not a time for snap decisions, take some time and think it over. That's going to be the That's way. exactly what I'm going to do, but people are going to see plenty of Ricky Hatton. I'm not going to just drift off into the distance. Boxing's my game. Sky Sports have been with me from absolute day one. And whatever decision I make on my future, Sky will be the first to know, trust me. Yeah, and when you look at it, like you say, you've never ducked to anyone, have you? Well, I've lost twice, and I've lost to the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. It's not too, it's not a bad way of looking at it, but uh, I'm devastated, and I never put my money on, 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 on that happening. But uh, whatever I decide to do, the love of the fans and the, the following that I have had throughout my career, it's just blowing every other champion out the water, I think. It's just phenomenal support. Just and I will be forever grateful. Yeah. You're not one to make excuses. Was the preparation adequate you know, in every area? You know, what, was there a little niggle again with the elbow near the end of the camp as well? There was things that could have been different, but I'd rather not talk. Um, you know, you, you were a guy who fought Amir Khan, gave him a, a tough fight. Um, like, what, how do you think he'd fare against like, a, a Kel Brook? Because they're saying that fight might happen next year. Amir Khan and Kel Brook? Yeah, yeah. I mean, people, as of late, just because I think of, uh, of the Canelo fight um, and the fact that he's been out of the ring so long, I've really um, not given Amir Khan the credit he deserves. Um, he has been a terror at 140, 147 for years. Um, he's a two-time world champion. Uh, he's, a, he's one of those guys that his, he's got his style down so well. He can beat anyone on any given night. Um, you know, Kel Brook is coming off some really tough fights, too. So it's going to be interesting to see how those guys would line up at the stages of their career. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope it's a fight that's happened, man, because it's one that should have happened, I mean, three years, three, four years ago. Yeah, that often happens in boxing. Absolutely. Um, that'll be a huge, huge fight for, for Emmy for the world, but especially in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as, uh, because you've been in the ring with some killers, man. You, you mentioned, I mentioned Khan. Obviously, last time I saw you, you were fighting Errol Spence. Um, who is the most talented, like, who would you say was, out of those guys you fought is the most talented guy you ever fought? And why? It's hard to say because Pacquiao's like a whole different beast. He's in a whole different level. You know, he guy's a living legend. Uh, you know, we're never going to see him beat Pacquiao again. You know, uh, I was honored to be able to get in the ring with him. Uh, you know, it was a, it was a 
great opportunity. You know, but yeah, it's just, it's it's hard to compare fighters. I know people like to ask that a lot. Yeah. If talk to if you talk to guys who've been in the ring, you're never gonna get a real good answer about that because it's so difficult to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would ask it this way then. Like I feel like a, a guy like Manny Pacquiao. Uh, what 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 exactly? What specifically made him such a difficult fight for you? Um, with Pacquiao, it, it's his unpredictability. He's super unpredictable. Uh, it's really difficult to gauge what he's doing. Um, he generates a lot of power. He's very explosive, fast. Uh, he's got footwork. He doesn't get tired. You know, like he's got a, he's got a lot of things with why he's been crushing people for the past 20 years. Yeah, and like I know with him, uh, it, it, as far as his boxing ability, do you, um, like what, what what did you think about his? Oh, it's just his pure technical boxing ability. Do you think it's underrated, overrated? Did he not have any? Or you know, the thing about boxing is there's no right and wrong. If it works, it's right. Yeah. You know, and, and he's been able to make the wrong things work for so long that it's right. You can't teach his style. Well, it's kind of like life. You got to find your own style and make it work for you. Yep. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, any message to the boxing fans out there? Anything you want to get out there about Just yourself? Stay tuned. Check out ChrisAlgeri.com. Uh, we got a lot of cool things going on right now. So and, and stay tuned for me to get back in the ring. All right, Chris Algeri, Warrior in the ring, and I uh, look forward to seeing you return. Thank you for talking to True School Sports. Just looking forward to this weekend. Everything, every single second of the day, ever since I, I stepped foot uh, here. It's like, it's just, it's it's surreal, it's amazing. Uh, Canastota, I mean, the people, the fans, the whole experience. I mean, I'm being inducted into the Hall of Fame? What? <laughs> You're not that shocked, are you, really? I am shocked. Come on. I am shocked. I mean, you knew you were always going to make the Hall of Fame. i <laughs> Listen, let me ask you a question. When you won the Olympic gold medal, you did it for your mom, who yes. had just passed away. While you were busy winning titles, it seemed like you were trying to win the approval of your father. Yes. Where, did, yes. where, did, where did Oscar fit in? At what point did you get satisfaction for you? I never did. I never had time to satisfy what I needed, what I wanted for myself. I was too busy pleasing the fans. I was too busy pleasing my father, pleasing everybody except myself. So you know what happens? When you retire, then what? Are now you, what? Are you starting to get some satisfaction and some peace uh, for yourself, for Oscar now at this point in your life? You know what, Teddy? Because I know I you've finally, been through, we all know you've been through a lot of problems with addiction. Oh and yes, things. but I finally have peace in my life. I finally feel that void in my stomach. I feel great, I feel amazing, I feel I feel the happiest I've ever been because, first of all, I have my family who's been with me. I have, look at the fans, look at the people, the boxing, boxing is my world. Boxing is what I have the passion for and uh, this is, this is, this is a beautiful, beautiful experience. Just being here in Canastota along with all the rest of the uh, inductees, Felix Trinidad, oh my gosh. The words that we are saying to each other while we're next to each other, whoo, boy. Who's, who's the, who, not necessarily a fight that you had to have won, or, but who was the most difficult opponent? Who's the opponent you have the most respect for and the most difficult opponent you ever fought? I, I think, I think what I, ha what I have to, I would have to say, uh, given the circumstances, when I fought Pacquiao, Okay. You came in very light. I came in too light. I mean, I, 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 I came in too light. But given the circumstances, put that aside, he's a very talented, difficult, crafty fighter that never gives up, has a lot of energy. That was very difficult. We didn't know him to be what he was and what he became after uh, that. That was his out, you know, that was his coming out party, so to speak, upsetting you. Were you shocked in that? I mean, we were shocked, yes. but were you shocked too? I, I, mean, I was shocked for about two years. <laughs> well, you've made the transition very successfully as a promoter. If you could make one fight happen in the world right now, what fight would you make? I would make... Any fighter in the world. Any any fighter in the world? Not a fighter that you have signed either. I, I would make De La Hoya Trinidad. 
uh, get the rematch. Uh, it still bothers you. It still bothers oh, you. Oh, we're competitors. You Why know did you, this, Teddy. So you brought it up. Why did you do what you did those last three rounds where you just moved, you ran around, and you blew the fight? Why? Well, what happened, what happened was um, Gil Clancy, who I most admired and, and who, I, who I have just such a respect for, uh, may he rest in peace, you know, he, uh, he told me, Oscar, box him, do not get hit. So, so I thought it was boxing and a craft, which a lot of fighters use today. And so I said, you know what? I have seven, eight rounds in the bag. Why not just listen to my master, Gil Clancy? And so I did, and obviously we know what happened. But you know what? Trinidad won that fight. I give him all the credit in the world. I have all the respect for him, and uh, that's that's the history that is and it's uh, still, boxing. And it still bothers the hell out of you. Obviously. Uh, well, uh, yes. Let's just say I don't lose sleep over it. <laughs> we have to, of course, talk about the, the current state of Golden Boy Promotions. Richard Schaefer has left. How are things right now? Things are great. The train is moving full steam ahead. We're making great fights. We have uh, a tremendous uh, lineup uh, uh, for Golden Boy, for the fans, especially for the fans. We are going to make the best fights happen for the fans. That's the bottom line. You'll work with Bob Arum. Why not? Work with everybody. I'm sitting next to Iron Mike Tyson. First of all, I can't believe I'm sitting next to Iron Mike. This is a guy I looked up to all my life because he is such a finisher, such a competitor. And now I'm looking at Mike Tyson with these fighters, skilled fighters, him promoting. Imagine Golden Boy, Mike Tyson coming together, putting together a great card. That's just great for boxing. Let me finish with one last thing, more important than all this stuff. Yes. You, your life, yes. happiness. Yes. How are you doing with your battle with addiction? I'm doing amazing. I'm doing Good. amazing. We're all glad to what hear I that. realized, what I realized was, is that everybody has difficulties, problems, issues in life. You know what? I went down in the canvas, but I'm not staying down. I'm getting back up and raising my hand in victory. That's what I'm doing. Class. Let's turn now to the extremely brave young man who Manny vanquished here tonight. A moment of sportsmanship here. David, there was a moment uh, between rounds toward the end of the fight when we heard you say to your trainer, Jim Strickland, I can handle his punches, he's just too fast. Was that basically the story of the fight? Yeah, he was, he was too fast. Fucker was too fast. <laughs> did, did you have any idea coming in that he could be that way? No, no. I, I seen him on tape and stuff like that, but I didn't. I was like, oh, I could do with that speed, you know? The power is what I wanted to worry about. But it wasn't so much about it, was just that he was so fucking fast, man. Fast, fast, fast. Amazingly fast. Fucking amazingly fast. Uh, I was like, I thought Freddie was in there fucking hitting me too. So, uh, <laughs> you know. Hey, you know what? It happens. You, you go into the fight and um, you go in and you risk it. Or with a guy like this, Manny, shit. At least I say I, I fought a, a good fighter, man. And that's all I want. I want to fight. That's it, man. You got cut on the nose, uh, I think, in the first round. By the second or third round, the cut above your eye uh, appeared. Obviously, Jimmy was trying to do everything he could to stop the cuts, but the blood kept coming. How much did that bother you during the fight? No, it didn't bother me at all. I thought he had a knife with him, though. I thought he, uh, he was cutting me up with a blade. But he, was, he was fast. He was faster than what I expected. Um, I, could, I, I could deal with the power, but it was just his, his speed was more than what, what I thought it was. And uh, I got tricked by his speed. Next. All right, Floyd Mayweather has retired. The argument is, who's the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world now? Is it Pacquiao? Is it Joe Calzaki? Is it maybe a rising superstar like Miguel Cotto? Off what you saw tonight, is there any real argument about this? Well, yeah, I mean, well, I'm not, not going to say, oh, no, he's not. He just beat me, man. So, <laughs> you know, he, he's good. He's fucking good. And um, I, my hats go off to him. We went in there, and we, I, I fought, and I gave him my all. And his speed was just a fucking the thing that, that sealed it for me. His speed was too controllable, uncontrollable, I mean. And, um, and my hat's off to him, and he's a good fighter, and, you know, well, what else can I say? I mean, we lost today, and tomorrow we'll win. Aside from rooting for the Cubs to win the World Series and all of Chicago's other big possibilities right now, what's in your future? Well, we're, we're going to go back, relax, uh, get us to a hot shower, and then from, we'll take it there from, from there uh, tomorrow and just see what happens. We're going to take a nice little break and just come back at it, man. I mean... I'm 32 years old, I'm, I'm getting up there, but I started back late, but you know, I mean, to go with a guy like Manny Pacquiao, shit, I think I'm doing pretty good. You heard him chanting, Manny, 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 do you think you got the respect of this crowd tonight? I hope I did, you know what, only time will tell. 
and um, that's that's just it. Our only time will tell. If they like the way I fight, then fine. If they don't, then you know that's just it. <laughs> they don't like the way I fight. It was a brave show. Oh, Thank yeah. you very much, David. Brandon Pacquiao's an awesome, awesome person. All right. Here with Brandon Rios. Brandon, uh, you went up there, and the first thing you said is, you know, I fought my heart out, and I gave it everything I could, but he was too fast. That was the determining factor, was just his speed in this fight, right? Yeah, man, he was very fast, uh, faster than I expected. Uh, he came in, you know, I came in top shape. He came in top shape. Was, I think what, what killed me was the speedness. I didn't think he was that fast. Uh, in the first round, it looked like a slip. They ruled it a slip. But when you kind of look back at the replay, it looked like a knockdown. What did you see there? Did you feel anything there, or did you think you just slipped? Uh, it was a slip. Uh, I didn't feel nothing. I was never hurt in the fight. It was just a slip. Uh, uh, I don't know if I slipped on the, the, in the middle of the ring or something, but it was a slip. Uh, I never was hurt. Yeah, you, you talked about uh, coming into this fight, how you had an iron chin, and you showed that tonight. You took all of his punches. You, you smiled through through all of them and showed everybody tonight that as fast and as strong as Manny Pacquiao is, uh, your chin still still stood the, te stood the test against him. You know what, honestly, uh, I didn't feel his power as much. I think I got more stunned with Alvarado than his punches. I never I never felt his punches. I think what killed me was just his penis and the awkwardness. He's very awkward, and he throw punches on different angles. I think that's what killed me, but hey, I tried my heart out. Like I said, I came in top shape. I tried to follow the game plan, and it just fucked me. Yeah, usually, we're used to seeing you throw, let your hands go, and throw more punches and be the aggressor, but it, at what point did you feel like, oh, crap, because you kind of kept your hands up, and you weren't throwing as much as we're used to seeing you throw. It's just like every time I throw, uh, I felt like I was going to get countered. But like I said, the, the hand speed, that was it, but... Uh, Pacquiao did a great job, man. I, I, I tip my hat off to Pacquiao and his team. But I tell one thing, though. Freddie Roach, I ain't nobody journeyman fighter. Uh, he was not going to stop me four rounds, six rounds. I was coming to fight. I tried to win. I bring my heart out, and he never hurt me. And Manny knows that it, in the interview after the fight, he said he was so tough. I hit him with everything that he had, and he just would not go down. Uh, he gave you a lot of credit for being able to take everything that he gave you and continue to stay on your feet all 12 rounds. Yeah, you know, like I said, it, <laughs> yeah. he did grab me some yeah. good shots, but I never, like I said, I never got dazed. It was just, uh, I think tonight the factor was the speed. Hey, oh, man, it just hurts. It hurts deep down the side because I turned... <laughs> I trained my ass out to win, you know. I fucking five months. <laughs> Obviously, vis visibly upset, but a really stand-up guy to give us the interview, Brandon Rios. You want to finish? Yeah. Like I said, it hurts. It hurts me bad because I, I like I worked my ass out so hard. Five months in the gym, training, training, training. And I think this was the best camp ever. It happens. It goes the other ways, but fuck it. I'll bounce back. You, you learn from your mistakes, and I'll come stronger. And you didn't lose to a bum. You didn't lose to yeah, anybody. Yeah. You lost to Manny Pacquiao. I mean, and you held your own. You stayed on your feet. It's, it, it, he's still, you think he's still one of the pound-for-pound pound greats with, with what you saw tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah you know, so, he's still up there, you know. Yeah. Uh, he still got it. I think it's just the speed, man. He's very fast, very awkward. I think that's what did it. But other than that, um, I don't know, man. It's just, it just hurts. It hurts. It hurts really bad. It feels like I let my team down. That's what to me it feels like. I let my team down because I tried and we worked so hard and we were so confident and everything. It just, that's what hurts.